Hey there again. I'm back today to talk about something called infrasonic intrusion. Now this is all going to be about frequencies and um, how low of frequencies affect us and how higher frequencies affect us. Now infrasonic, in, infrasonic intrusion is also known as the silent enemy. Now this is when you have frequency waves that are lower than our audible hearing, meaning we won't hear these frequencies, but they still will uh, interact with our eardrum, sending a signal to the eardrum that will then signal into your brain as like a tap from your eardrum and your brain and your electromagnetic output, you will, your electrical wiring is your brain and everything, your nervous system is, is still hearing in a way that frequency. Now, the reason why it's called the silent killer is because the they're below the audible range, yet it's still sending these signals, so your brain is still completely active and reacting to the vibration from the frequency. So this can cause things like nausea, restlessness, headaches, irritability, tiredness. So that's on like a lower scale. Now, in a I just watched a documentary about when they about this and how this happened to a group of hikers. They were on a mountain that was they found later to have these lower frequency outputs. So they were doing this hike, they were receiving these lower frequency outputs in their brains, causing all this extra vibration and neurological firings that cause them to descend into a madness. They, they, these vibrations were also causing their eyeballs to start vibrating independently, causing on this mountaintop landscape, causing them to see shadow-like figures in their peripheral vision, causing them to go mad, thinking that they're haunted, thinking that there's some kind of animal out getting them. So they ran from their tent in just their, in their pajamas and they ended up dying of hypothermia and other <clears throat> other causes so our bodies our frequency is between one and six hertz is the uh typical human body these vibe these frequencies of the infrasonic intrusion is about between two and 16 hertz way below what we are audible audibly able to hear so there's unnatural causes to making these outputs, these subtle outputs, which would be like machines, compressors, heavy vehicles, industry employees, or people who work in large office spaces will be affected by this more so than anyone else. Because there's also natural events that cause in, in uh, infrasonic sounds. Uh, like severe weather, surf, avalanches, lightning, volcanoes, earthquakes, waterfalls, iceberg calving, meteors, upper atmospheric lightning, things like that of that nature that go on all the time. So those things are also a part of our collective consciousness vibration um, frequency output, meaning the collective of the entire earth is including these severe weather uh, phenomenons. So when we look at things like the Schumann resonance to see spikes in the collective consciousness, it's not just including spiritual downloads or whatever you may think. It's also, it's the output vibrational frequency of every living thing plus weather patterns on earth. So it's our frequency output, it's our animals, it's the squirrels outside, it's, it's all of that. It's the severe weather and everything. So when we have, let's say, an earthquake across the world from you, you will feel a resonant effect from that. You might not understand it, you might not hear it, but your emotions may, may mimic it. Or you may be triggered in with a nauseous feeling or irritability, tiredness, and that could be from an earthquake across the world because that is a part of our all collective resonance. So, let's... Yep. So imagine, imagine going through your day, day to day basis and you're already getting the frequency output of weather, animals, the people around you, all of earth 
is all going to be affecting you inside your brain, inside your electrical impulses, your neurological firings are going to be affected by these frequency outputs. So if imagine having that plus you work in an office or you work as an, an industry laborer and you're constantly around these heavy machineries that are making that low constant hum, you may start to feel a little bit crazy. You may feel like the subtle energy from that will trigger your emotions to feeling emotional, depressed maybe, or angry or whatever. That's how our bodies are able to translate subtle energy. They translate subtle energy into emotions for us to process. And then we rack our brains trying to process these sounds or these emotions, trying to process this subtle energy. And not all the time is there an exact answer to why. There is, you, you might rack your brain, why am I feeling depressed? Why am I feeling irritable? Why am, and you're looking for this why, and you're driving yourself deeper into madness, like the people did on the, on the mountaintop hill. So take these things into consideration. Remove yourself from any space with a lot of activity, a lot of sounds, a lot of frequency outputs, and get yourself into a quiet area. Get yourself away from that. This is also why like cleansing and smoke cleansing and, and singing bowls and bells and chimes and all of that are great for your space because your space can hold these lower frequency outputs from let's say your computer or negative energy. Those are also lower frequency waves. So that are going to affect your brain the same way as these intra infrasonic sounds. Say negativity is an infrasonic sound. That's why it's also bad for you. It also creates madness. It also creates depression. It creates all these mental turmoils because we're not understanding that we are being poisoned by the frequency, the low frequency. It's not necessarily a person or, or a situation. It's the frequency around that situation. It's the frequency around that person. It's the frequency around anything. Everything has to do with sound and frequency, even if you can't hear it. So it's important to cleanse your space, to use these higher vibrational techniques to clear out some of those lower vibrational frequencies. So crystal clear quartz frequency is 3,200, I can't even, it's actually 32,768 hertz. So that's a frequency that's higher than what we can hear, most of us, I can hear them and it's crazy, but it's a higher frequency that when it comes into us, it, it benefits us because the higher our frequency is, the more clarity we have, the more balance, the more centered we feel, the more in, in tune with these lighter vibrations, these lighter things, the, not these low constant pulses that are, that are triggering your electrical impulses into this negative outward response. So if the higher you, you have, the higher frequencies you have around you will pull you out of this, this infrasonic intrusion and put you more above that. Like put it, put the, put the space in a higher vibration. That's why it's important for you to vibrate higher because we vibrate between one and six hertz. So if you keep that higher, you're less susceptible to dropping and meeting those lower frequencies and then sinking your electromagnetic impulses in your brain with that lower silent killer, that silent enemy infrasonic intrusion. So if you're feeling like you're irritable in your space before freaking out and thinking you need to move, cleanse it. Bells, singing bowls, high vibrations, crystals, like Put these around these are going to emit that energy and bring your entire space to a higher vibration so it's 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 yes it's about positive and negative but it's not necessarily limited to that it's it's the fact that negative vibrations are lower vibrations that will then become infrosonic intrusion the silent enemy descent into madness that's my train of thought with that higher vibrations higher clarity thoughts, more control over your electrical impulses, a lighter feeling, not this heavier one. So 
yeah, this was just really interesting me, interesting me when I read about this. And then I was also watching this documentary talking about how the, the mountaintop by the locals were named in their native language, don't go there. <laughs> because they couldn't explain it at the time, being an ancient culture, but they just knew anytime that they sent people up on the top of the mountain, they descended into madness. And then later on, through scientific testing and do monitoring frequency waves, they realized that the true killer was actually this infrasonic intrusion. I think that's crazy interesting. So they started seeing things, started seeing people, started freaking out. And it was all just because they were stuck in this like dead zone, this this zone of just this low frequency output, just like this steady and it never ends. I personally have had that happen to me. If I'm around like um, certain light, light bulbs or certain lighting things, like I'll hear the hum and it's not necessarily too annoying. It, it mostly happens in like old houses, but hearing that slow like hum in the back of my ear all day, I was going crazy when any other sound was introduced into my environment. So let's say that there was actually construction work down the street and I was hearing the beep, beep, beep of the freaking truck backing up that for some reason backed up for six hours. But yeah, but that's, that's my point. It was that low frequency intrusion infrasonic intrusion that was already causing me to be on that edge like on that edge ready to snap but i didn't hear anything and then that extra auditory intrusion coming in of that truck backing up and i lost it i lost it i lost all control over my emotional output my my response i was freaked i was about to walk off the street and yell at the guy for having the truck beeping for backup and it's not me. That's not who I am. I'm not typically a person like that, but I personally am very, very affected by frequency. So we all are, we all very much are, but I take it, I, I, I'm very much aware of it. So it's always been a thing that causes discomfort for me. Um, lighting, sounds of lighting, sounds of like old refrigerators, old electrical wiring, like I can hear all of it and it's very overwhelming. So what I started doing was cleansing that space with singing bowls and I could feel a dramatic difference for a couple days that, or, or maybe only a day because it was that constant hum where I would have to redo it. But then also I have enough crystals to fill a cave in my house. So, but they were becoming affected as well by this low um, infrasonic intrusion. They started to like I could hear their their high pitch. They started being out of tune. Like usually they all are this one ee, and they're all together in this like harmony. But with that other infrasonic intrusion underneath that vibration, they were all out of tune and it was driving my ears nuts. It was like nails on chalkboard. So I have to I had to cleanse my crystals. I had to start taking care of them more. And there's so many. I was overwhelmed. But I found out about singing bowls. Singing bowls will immediately cleanse that space and bring it to that higher vibrational frequency, knocking out that infra, um, knocking out that infrasonic intrusion, and creating a higher vibrational output that your body can process in a healthier, more positive way, not in a negative way. So that higher vibration. So. I had to do those cleansing techniques a lot in that house. It was an old house and it had a lot of uh, infrasonic intrusion. Um, now I live out in the woods and there's a lot less of that, but I can tell, I could hear if we had somebody work, work on the hot water heater and then whenever that turns on, I now hear a new hum in the house. It took a while for me to get used to it, but I did, but that's another sign of infrasonic intrusion that was causing me irritability, but because I was aware of it, I was chill, you know, and I was like, I'll get used to it. It'll work its way into the house and I won't hear it as much anymore. But that's, that's why it's important to keep high vibrational things around you, like singing bowls, chimes, wind chimes, like anything like that. Like even if you're a non-believer of, you know, spirituality or anything like that or spiritual practices, you just know though that chimes and bells and things like that are pleasant to your ear. They're pleasant to your ear because they're healing your ear. They're healing your electrical magnetic output. They're healing your frequency because your frequency is going to be constantly dragged down by these infrasonic intrusions that are caused by natural stuff as well as unnatural things. 
so that's why we we feel drawn to them without even this knowledge we feel drawn to those types of things we feel drawn to good music we feel drawn to higher vibrational energy so and that's the reasoning so lower vibrational energy into your auditory receptors will trigger your brain and you'll start to almost like attune and sync up with that that lower vibration but you're not going to it's not going to be good. Like it's not going to be well, like your eyes will still do that vibration and it won't be able to really handle it. And it will cause like those peripheral vision shadows and things like that. And then that descent into madness, higher vibrational will kick that out. Um, yeah. So if anyone wants to know any other cool tools on how to keep your frequency high, not only your own, but like the things around you that you're coming into contact with. A good thing, uh, I keep around a lot of shungite and black black stones because they absorb. So they'll absorb these frequency outputs, those lower ones will be absorbed into the lower frequency stone and avoid my ear balls. <laughs> and like I said before, I keep singing bowls around, I keep incense, I keep smudge sticks, I keep, um, I have wind chimes outside. Uh, yeah, so next time you're starting to feel a little irritable or nauseous or this or that or depressed, take first, first address your frequency around you. First address that. See if by changing what your receptors are receiving will help change your mood. And I guarantee that's number one on the list. That and hydration. <laughs> So give it a shot. If you need any other tools or, or ideas to cleanse that, that, that infrasonic intrusion, just hit me up in the comments and we'll discuss some more things. Have a good day, guys.